Our guest today is the author and researcher Andrew Johnson. Andrew has written many books, including Finding the Secret Space Program, Secrets in the Solar System, 9-11 Holding the Truth, 9-11 Finding the Truth, and all these books can be found on Andrew's website, which is www.checktheevidence.com. And the program today is about Andrew's book, Climate Change and Global Warming Exposed. Global warming, or the greenhouse effect, are common terms that we all know about, and we all are trying our very best to leave a smaller carbon footprint. But, is it based on the truth, or is it just a hoax? So let's go and find out from the man, the legend, Andrew Johnson. Hello, welcome to Unite Planet. Uh, today we're in the living room of Enlightenment, and today we're joined by a regular guest. You like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Joined by a regular guest that we have on um, quite often and always welcome, Andrew Johnson. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for inviting me back. You're very welcome. Um, today's topic is going to be climate change, global warming exposed. Um, a lot of the info will be based on Andrew's book that's been out. How long has it been? It's oh, it's been out, been out uh, almost a year now, I think. Mm. Uh, maybe not quite a year. I can't remember the exact date I published it, but I think it was like um, uh, August or September last year I, yeah, I put yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So obviously, if you want to have the book, we'll have the links and everything. Yeah, and I'll just say that uh, you obviously you can get a paperback as you see here, but mm -hmm. there is also a free download available, so you can download it in PDF form. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you can get it also as an ebook, which is a bit cheaper than the paperback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, basically the PDF is free, so anyone who's got a web connection and a PDF reader can can read the whole thing. Excellent. Super. Excellent. Um, so we'll just start with um, just an overview of, of climate change and, and global warming and mm -hmm. and what is out there in the mainstream and mm -hmm. and then go okay. from go from there. Certainly, yes. I mean, I've watched the story of climate change and global warming developing mm. since really uh, the late 80s early 90s mm. and uh, you know I remember for example doing geography lessons at school and we learned about how to read a weather map mm -hmm. you know and things like talking about the cloud cover you do that in eighths so we used mm. to do them so you say yeah. one eighth cloud cover or mm. one quarter cloud cover even you'd say eight eighths cloud cover you mm. know and all this and uh, we learned how to read uh, weather maps and things and I remember our geography teacher saying that uh, you know that there was talk about uh, another ice age uh, you know coming yeah, in at that yeah. point and or then some people thought it was warming and blah 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 and uh, he didn't really put things one way or the other um, but then we start to get talk of this uh, global warming coming in mm. probably in the sort of late 80s yeah, yeah. and as I say before then mm -hmm. they were talking about an ice age <laughs> and I quote from a, a news report, which I think was from about 1977, where they were predicting that there was going to be a new ice age, you know, and uh, the, the, there was going to be snow drifts down to the Mason-Dixon line in the US, which is relatively mm -hmm. far south. And so um, you know, then have to wonder why this all changed. Mm -hmm. And was there some enormously important discovery mm -hmm that uh, changed all of this to, to yeah. say global warming as it was called back then and my simple answer is that I couldn't see what alleged discovery there had been mm. you know to, to say oh yes everything was going to warm up um, and I remember watching uh, I think it was in 1991 Channel 4 did a program mm. called um, uh, The Greenhouse Conspiracy oh. 
and that's when they were you know, that's when this uh, phrase the greenhouse effect uh-huh. come in yeah, yeah. and that you know that's not used much now that you don't hear no, that no, much, yeah, as yeah. much now mm. or you do hear greenhouse gases don't, yes, don't yeah, that's you right, yeah, mm. yeah. which is a bit mm. strange because what are the gases in a greenhouse well <laughs> air mm-hmm. you know yeah. come on yeah <laughs> so that in itself yeah. is a bit of a a silly phrase, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, of course, we mm-hmm. find that as you get into this, that the the terminology is rather silly, mm-hmm. frankly. But it's, it comes out of people's mouths without much thought, I mm-hmm. think, oftentimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, greenhouse. The greenhouse effect. What's that? Well, that's this idea that obviously, if you go into a greenhouse, it's going to be on a given day. It's going to be much warmer inside. Mm-hmm. Than if you're outside the greenhouse, particularly of course when the sun is out. Yeah. The point yeah. being that the infrared radiation from the sun heats up the air because you're inside an enclosed um, container, the heat c- cannot be released as quickly as it's coming mm-hmm. in. So you get this net warming effect. Uh, and that's the greenhouse effect, this net warming effect. So their argument became from somewhere, I don't, know, don't really know where, in the 1990s that carbon dioxide what what that does is if you have a lot of carbon dioxide it allows uh, heat to come in from the sun essentially mm. but it, it, it insulates so you can, the heat can't get back out again, according to according to the theory yeah. of this yeah. greenhouse effect uh, and there are other gases in the atmosphere which you know will enhance this capture of heat mm. the, the, the heat uh, not being able to get away one of, one of which um, is actually water vapour, which is in mm. thought of a gas, and that actually has a bigger greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide does, <laughs> okay. which is mm. another of the sort of silly things yeah. Yeah. Um, that uh, uh, you know c- comes into this when you start to study it. Now, of course, you know the the the, the diehard uh, climatologist, uh, uh, global warming believers, will argue that water vapour is different because it behaves differently and it's sits at a different level in the atmosphere mm. and blah 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 so they will give various arguments as to why water vapor isn't really as significant as carbon dioxide mm. Mm. Um, but one of the things which you can soon find out about carbon dioxide is that the actual proportion it is of the atmosphere is very small i think it's mm. something like 0.0013 percent of the <laughs> atmosphere mm-hmm. so it's a tiny yeah. fraction of what what the overall atmosphere is mm. Um, so as a whole, you know, it of the, of the atmosphere, it's actually relative, a relatively small component. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the first problem with this theory of the the the, the, the greenhouse warming from carbon dioxide. Mm. And um, another issue, for example, is that if you look in the historical records from ice core samples mm. and from geological records and things like this and tree rings that mm. go back a certain number of years, like say to the uh, 17th or 18th century, I think particularly in the 17th century, some of the dates I've put in the book, mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and I'll explain why I haven't, I haven't got all the dates in my head in a minute, but um, you can look back in even in uh, the history books, for example, they used to go grow grapes in Britain. They used to grow grapes in Britain, I think, in the 17th century. And there's etchings of vine vineyards, you know, in Britain. Mm-hmm. So the point is that it's been warmer in the past yeah. without any industrialization, you know, before the current uh, sort of uh, situation within the widespread industrialization that we have. So that means that let's just say the CO2 warming theory is right, which uh-huh. it almost certainly isn't mm-hmm. from if you study all the scientific data yeah, yeah. and don't selectively pick, you know, cherry pick it. It's not necessarily going to be a problem anyway. I mean, mm. okay, w- w- distribution of, of water may be uh, different in a warmer climate and distribution of plants and certain crops might become viable whilst others become not viable mm-hmm. anymore. So mm-hmm. you might have issues like that perhaps if that happened. But uh, again, it's been warmer in the past, and that's mm-hmm. all in the records yeah, already yeah, than it is yeah. now. The, 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 you've had warmer summers, and we've also, of course, had the cooler summers. Mm-hmm. So this idea of global warming then says, well, really, why is that even a problem? What, what, so what if the globe does warm? Mm-hmm. You know, is that going to kill us all? And, and, the, and the argument is that, well, yeah, it's going to make life really bad, you know, so we have to do this, that, and the rest of it, which mm-hmm. we'll come on to in a bit. So the whole... 
a you can question the basis for the for the global warming theory in the terms of the carbon dioxide. That's questionable. Mm. And b even if that was true, you can question that the the results of that warming would be negative. You know mm. that that's questionable too. It might actually be positive. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also simple experiments you can do with growing plants. So you can um, basically put a plant inside a sort of greenhouse type thing, or one of these just covered covered uh, things that the sunlight can get through. You know that they use for uh -huh. protecting certain types of crops or plants or trees. And then you know, so in other words, you enclose it in some type of plastic marquee type thing. But mm -hmm. you know, marquee's the wrong word. So it'd be all around, and it wouldn't be a glass greenhouse. But then what do you do? Pump carbon dioxide into it. And what happens? The plants grow better. They mm -hmm. grow, grow taller. Mm -hmm. So you have two, you know, two of these plastic sort of greenhouses, whatever you want to call them, side by side. Pump CO2 into one, and no CO2 mm -hmm. in the other. And the plants in the one with the CO2 will typically be bigger than in the other one mm -hmm. because they they metabolise it as part of photosynthesis and produce oxygen. Mm -hmm. but they, so they like carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So again, you know, make <laughs> what you will of that. Mm -hmm. um, so then, of course, various figures have been put out that there's the, the average warming, the average temperature of the globe has gone up. Mm. These figures have been disputed because it depends how you measure it. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. For example, one of the obvious and well-known um, climate phenomena, if you want to call it that, is the uh, heat island effect. Mm. So in other words, if you measure the average temperature in London uh, and then measure the average temperature in a village outside of London or just outside a village, then the average temperature in London is probably going to be higher because you've got all that tarmac, concrete, asphalt, mm. structure, hard materials, you know, they absorb heat from the sun during the day, mm. radiate mm. it at night, and so the average temperature is higher because the materials in that uh, city or that town, they hold the heat in, you know, they're, mm. they're like giant storage heaters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going to get that. But that's not the same as global warming. That's yeah. that's that's urban heat. That's called the urban heat island effect. Yeah, yeah. That's been known about for, for years. So you can't say that just because the city is warmer, then the rest of the globe is going to be warmer. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Uh -huh. So and this is how they put it out, is it? Is this it? In yeah. certain instances. Mm. So, so, for example, if you take a set of temperature data mm. and they say, oh, yeah, well, the average temperature has actually gone up. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to know where those temperatures yeah. were measured at. If okay. all those temperatures and all those thermometers in cities and if those cities have been getting bigger yeah. then it, yeah that's probably true the temp average temperature probably has gone up mm -hmm. um, uh, so you've got to know where the mm. temperatures were taken from mm -hmm. and what proportion say were in cities what proportion were near the ocean mm. you know and this sort of thing um, so often the argument arguments are simplified beyond a level that they should be uh, yeah, simplified yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and over the last sort of, well, in fact, since 1991, even that 1991 documentary, uh, they had scientists that were sceptical of this idea of, of mm. global warming, even back then. Mm, okay. um, but then, of course, what's happened is, and I write about this in the, in the beginning of this book, really, that the issue of global warming gets kind of muddled in and confused together with environmentalism. Right. right. Yeah. You know, yes. this this is that this is what is put out really and not properly, um, you know, explained and 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 differentiated between, is that, or, you know, you show somebody a, a, um, a picture of a factory belching out whatever mm. on TV, and it's maybe sulfur dioxide that's coming out of this chimney or something. And then they associate that with uh, global warming. No, mm. these are separate issues. Yeah. yeah, okay, people are chopping down forests. We know that. Mm. And, you know, you've got mining going on and water supplies being polluted. And then, of course, you've got fracking going on. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. a whole other thing with that. Yeah. But that, and that's another thing. So we're all concerned about global warming, but they don't seem to be concerned about fracking. Mm. You know, they're not, they're actually encouraging fracking. Yeah. The government yeah. are trying to get this going. Yeah. Yet, of course... This is surely going to produce more methane. Methane's coming mm. out of the ground. That's a greenhouse gas. Yeah, yeah. So even if they have leakages, that's going to make global warming worse, exactly, according yeah. to their own arguments. Mm. Uh, and you're going to burn that gas once you've actually, you know, yeah. uh, put it into the gas uh, network or whatever, wherever it goes. And that's going to create more, yeah. more uh, CO2, mm. according to them. Um, so, you know, you, you've got all kinds of contradictory uh, 
information and mm. actions contradicting with what they claim is being shown by the science. Mm. So there is clearly something else going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and and, and you know, th- this is more what this book is about, really, okay. in, 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 in this. Um, but let, let's just say, for example, you have to separate out environmentalism mm. from you know, issues of global warming. Yeah. They, are, they are related, but they are not, one does not automatically create the other. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. um, and um, so in the book, really, I go through some of that. And I also go through where the idea of global warming came from. Mm. And it actually came from uh, a, a few people. Uh, one is um, James Lovelock. Mm. He was one of the people that first proposed that the, the Earth was warming up uh, and, and reacting to uh, the presence of human activity, you know, and what it was doing yeah. to the environment. The other one was Morris Strong, who ironically oh, yeah. is, a, is okay. a, a, an oil billy, or mm. was an oil billy there. Okay. Um, and um, so you start to look at where these ideas came mm. from, and then you, you, you find a document from the Club of Rome, mm. which is one of these uh, sort of uh, international think tanks. Yeah, yeah. And, Did they have um, a summit as well? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they've had various summits, summits I think. Yeah, but yeah, there, was, yeah. there was a document produced in 1991, mm. um, which was meant to be looking to how, you know, looking things like population increase mm. and changes in uh, land uses and things like that, I, I suppose, was in it. But in there, they basically said, uh, we invented the idea of global warming mm. so that we could, um, you know, influence... Uh, public policy. That's basically mm. what they say. Yeah. I can't remember the exact quote. Mm-hmm. So on page 75 of this uh, Club of Rome report, let me just get the title of this report. Mm. Um, the first global revolution, a report by the Council of the Club of Rome, a blueprint for the 21st century. This report by the Club of Rome sets forth a strategy for world survival at the onset of the first global revolution on a small planet we seem hell-bent to destroy. And we'll come back to this very mm. concept shortly that we're hell-bent to destroy. I'm not hell-bent on destroying the planet, so <laughs> I don't know why they're saying uh, we. Uh-huh. I'm yeah. not part of this we, thank you very much. <laughs> With conclusions that are even more far-reaching, that those of its uh, limits to growth report 20 years ago, I should say then, uh, this new glo- global revolution comes into being amid... Uh, social, economic, technological and cultural upheavals and calls for an all-out attack on world crises. So that's what they're saying. So it's like fear-mongering, basically. Yeah, it's the end yeah. of the world is nigh, in a, in, a, in a phrase. So on page 75, they say, under a heading, the common enemy of humanity is man. So we're the enemy of ourselves, <laughs> according to them. Uh-huh. In searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite, we came up with the idea dwell on that right. we came up with the idea not we did a scientific study mm. uh-huh. that showed that this was the case uh-huh. we came up with the idea that pollution the threat of global warming water shortages famine and the like would fit the bill <laughs> in their totality and their interactions these phenomena do constitute a common threat which must be confronted by everyone together but in designating these dangers as the enemy we fall into the trap which we have already warned readers about, namely mistaking symptoms for causes. All these dangers are caused by human intervention in natural processes, and it is only through changed attitudes, changed attitudes and behaviour that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. So it's all our fault. <laughs> yeah. So it's all our fault. Yeah, and as I yeah. say in another version of saying that, we drive the cars, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, we use the electricity. We have the cups of tea and boil the kettle. Uh-huh. You know, so we've caused all these terrible problems in the world, and we should be ashamed of ourselves, shouldn't we? Absolutely. <laughs> so the only way, of course, to get around that is we need to be controlled because we're irresponsible. Mm-hmm. So you know, we've got to do things to mitigate these negative environmental effects. Uh-huh. And again, they've they've put under the, that umbrella there several things. It's not just carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. They put like water, you know, usage and that sort of mm. thing. So that essentially then sets the scene for what came next. 
which essentially, um, as many people see it, and I agree, is the what was called um, Agenda 21, mm, uh-huh. which was this document that which, which was produced out of the Rio summit yeah, yeah. Uh, in 1992. Now, I can't remember whether the summit was 1991 and the document was 1992, or whether the, you know, the, the document was prepared for the summit. I, I can't remember the exact order. Not that, I don't think that really matters that much. Mm-hmm. But if you then go to 1992, you will see that this uh, um, Agenda 21 document was produced and since then it, bits of that document have been used to set public mm. policy uh-huh. and this idea of carbon footprints and uh, various controls that have been suggested have come essentially from that Agenda 21 document uh, and and one of the uh, bits of language that comes out of that is sustainability. Yeah, that's yeah. one of these agenda twenty one buzzwords. Uh-huh. Um, and there's a, another couple of phrases as well which have which have come out of that. And I've got them in the book here. Is um, uh, smart um, one of the words that they is a buzzword as well? That's that's smart. come out more recently. I don't yeah, think that was in the original um, agenda twenty one. But yeah, you've got you know, things like smart meter, smart mm-hmm. grid, mm-hmm. Uh, this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And now we've got smart motorways here in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, they do that, don't they? they? Link buzzwords so it, we can easily identify with it, and then yeah, they've got us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, definitely. So, so yeah, so you know, you, you've got that's come out mm-hmm. of it, mm-hmm. and I go through a little bit of the Agenda Twenty One document. Uh, of course, it's it's um, you know it's um, three hundred pages long, so I don't don't go through all of it. Huh. And again, uh, the Agenda Twenty One document. It sounds like a good idea. It sounds like, oh yeah, no, we, need, yeah. we need to we need to use things responsibly. You know, we shouldn't use too much coal. We shouldn't use burn too many uh, resources unnecessarily. We should run businesses efficiently so that there's not as much wastage. We should um, try and do things in our own lives so that we don't waste resources. All that's good stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But I already do all of that myself anyway, mm-hmm. and I think most other people that mm-hmm. do that I know, mm-hmm. um, because. Particularly if you're trying to be, uh, you know, economical with money, like I am. Yeah, yeah. You know, the less resources that you use, the less money typically you're going to be paying out anyway. So yeah, I'm fairly true, yeah. frugal yeah. with uh, all all the resources that I use. So, um, but the Agenda 21 document then sort of goes on from there and makes recommendations about uh, how governments mm. should implement legislation which then is used to control people's activities. Yeah, yeah. And that's, of course, now why we've got, you know, sort of 10 years after that uh, Agenda 21 document came out, we've got this expression of carbon uh, footprints. Mm. In other words, um, word, that's what guess. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you've now got uh, carbon credits. Mm. And you've mm-hmm. got, um, uh, you know, you've got this... Uh, I go, if I go on to Enterprise Rent-A-Car, I can uh, offset my CO2 emissions by paying an extra £2, apparently, or on the rental. <laughs> To offset my CO2 emissions, you know. Uh, so how does that work? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they're, they're calling things like carbon tax. I mean, yeah, this is yeah. ridiculous, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. But 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 but, that, but it would appear to me that they chose carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is the gas that we all breathe out. Mm-hmm. So if they can carry on with this propaganda, which claims that CO2 is a is essentially a toxic mm-hmm. poison, which is going to kill us all in, when it when it's in excess. Mm-hmm. Then they can basically say when we can breathe and not breathe because mm-hmm. that's what we will breathe out. Uh-huh. You know, of course, that's the extreme version. But that, that to me is a the way that the propaganda mm-hmm. works. You know, uh-huh. that that would be a logical kind of extreme of use of that propaganda. Yeah. yeah. Because it's all to do with CO two, yeah. and and despite the fact that now we haven't really had any significant warming, I don't think there's been no significant warming since 1998. Mm. So that's just normal changes in climate mm-hmm. you know I, I don't think you can possibly think, oh oh yeah well we set up with this enormous factory you know in the middle and someone it's been belching out all this co2 therefore that's what's made all this weird weather no we can't say that mm-hmm. there's no there's no link to that mm-hmm. um and i mean also in the book this book isn't really about debunking global warming mm-hmm. it's not about that mm-hmm. Um, but I do put some information at the beginning and I d- direct people to other resources because there are many books now out which, um, you know, go into a lot more detail than not what I've just said about the problems with uh, the amount of CO2 mm-hmm. in the atmosphere, you know. And like other books, for example, that would do a much better job than my book does of saying, for example, volcano erupts. Mm-hmm. The amount of CO2 that comes out of a volcano is like 
what we produce in a hundred years. Mm. It's, yes. you know, it's an yeah. enormous volume mm. in one single volcanic eruption. Mm. Wow. You know, <laughs> it's, it's enormous. And so then you would ask, well, so, okay, so this CO2 problem then, now is it the stuff that's coming out of volcanoes, the CO2 that's coming out of them that's the problem, mm. or is it what we're belching out of our cars? Mm-hmm. How do you differentiate between those two mm-hmm. forms of CO2 in your equations? Mm-hmm. How do you factor yeah. in that, like, yeah. oh, one year we've had three volcanoes go off, you know, and next year we've had five. How, do you, how yeah. does that factor mm-hmm. into your figures? You know, you ask those sorts of questions and you won't really get any decent answers, really. No. You know, they'll try and sidestep the issue. So I don't really go into that that much because my book's uh, not about that. That's just setting the scene for what we've been fed. All right. Uh-huh. And I also give you examples of how anyone who disagrees with the consensus about mm. the settled science of global warming, mm. which is no such thing, yeah. mm-hmm. it's settled propaganda, that's all <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like David Bellamy, for example, oh, the yeah. moment he, he, he said, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. he said, no, this global warming, no, you can't prove this. This is, no, this is, mm-hmm. this, this is not the case. The moment he he expressed disagreement on that in the in the sort of eighties and nineties, he was uh, no longer seen on the BBC. So he's one. Did Johnny Ball say something? Yeah, Johnny Ball. Ball he, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he's he's a uh, he's a sceptic, and he's not really seen him much. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There was a French guy that I put in here. He was he was ostracised. French weatherman. Uh, he was given a holiday. Uh, <laughs> a, long, a long holiday yeah, yeah, from reporting on the weather you know because he, he said that this CO2 is, you know, is not right um, so, so it's in the benefit of your career mm-hmm. that you, you go along with the propaganda correct so it's yeah. consensus yeah. thinking if you yeah. go along with the pr- propaganda you mm. know and there's, there's other, other examples that I've mentioned before like to give an example if you're an academic mm. and you want to do write a paper on the effect uh, sorry, the decline of the uh, red squirrel population in Scotland, mm-hmm. and you want to do a, a scientific study on that, uh, you probably wouldn't get that necessarily funded. But if you said uh, the effect of global warming on the squirrel population of uh, northern Scotland, <laughs> you know, red squirrel population in northern Scotland, you get that funded. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, I'm exaggerating to make yeah, a point, but it's yeah, that yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way that funding bodies are awarded. And if you wanted to do research saying, uh, the, the global cooling in the last uh, 10 years as shown in uh, uh, tree rings you know from various sites you would not get that funded you wouldn't get it funded because it's not part of the consensus <laughs> thinking yeah. and that's the way that it works and that's primarily the way it still works I mean there's been a bit more scepticism uh, perhaps in the last five years mm. than there has been um, but then you know e- even the Pope has said that uh, we've got problems with global warming uh, Paul McCartney said it yeah, okay. you know he, he said it in, uh, a few <clears throat> years back, uh, and and, it, and I think it, the quote from Paul McCartney even mentions Holocaust deniers as well, oh, something yes, like that. Yeah. Really? Paul McCartney is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got the quote in the book here. I won't, I, I won't flick through to find it, but you'll find it in here. Um, and then there was even a German uh, scientist who basically said that uh, people who deny climate change or deny the causes of it, should, he didn't, you know, that gets missed out as well, uh, should be killed. <laughs> that's that's, that's blatant well, you can get. That, yeah. That, yeah. That, that was basically what he said. Um, I'd have to get the exact quote, but it was ba- that's basically the, the, the result of what he, what, he, what he said. And then he had, to, he had that on his website for a while, and of course he had to take it off. <laughs> um, Eventually left it on for a bit. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that I've put all that in the book, really, and people can check the references mm. and you, know, you can yeah. find that website. I think I managed to find the page that the guy deleted in the Internet Archive, so you can go and find that. Um, and that's really sort of the first, I think, couple of chapters. But it also then, in doing that, you need to establish that we've got this similar situation to have with the 9-11 research, which I think mm. we discussed in the past, in that you've got the official story, yeah, yeah. which is the hijackers and all that. Then you've got this... Um, other story like bombs in the building, mm. remote controlled planes to capture certain yeah, people, yeah. and then you've got the actual mm. reality, which is what the evidence shows, mm. which is the towers turned to bust, the little bust turned to dust. It was an energy weapon, yeah. and the planes were likely some form mm-hmm. of image projection. That's what the truth is. Mm-hmm. You know, no debate on that, as far as I'm so concerned. That's where the evidence points yeah. to, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you can debate about. <clears throat> 
uh, what the exact uh, nature of mm. the weapon was that yeah. turned them to yeah. just who owns it, all of that. But that's the only thing that explains mm. the evidence. Same with the planes. Mm. We don't know quite how the projection system worked or mm. whether it was a uh, holographic system mm. or you know whether it was a projectile, whether that image was somehow projected from somewhere else or whether it was a missile that had a projector in it and that gave this image of the plane. We don't know yeah. that. Yeah. The fact that is that it was a projection of some kind. And we know they have that kind of technology. Yes. So. I, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so with the climate change, you've got yes, it is CO two. Mm. No, it isn't. And then you know, there's various sort of ver sort of versions of that. You've got you've got a dialectic where two groups can yeah. argue with each other. Mm -hmm. And this is primarily what's been going on with the Truth Movement mm. and with other things as well. To these two groups argue with each other. Mm. But the third thing is kept out of, more or less kept mm. out of the frame of 98%, 99%, 99.5% .99 yeah. yeah. of the population. Yeah. That third area of truth is never looked at, never discussed. Mm -hmm. And that's really what, I mean, there's a couple of things. Like, well, let, let's, let's, let's take the anti-global warming view of CO2 in that one of the things that I write about in this book, I think it's like chapter four, uh, chapter five, sorry, uh, don't talk about changes in the solar system. So in that mm. chapter, I list various uh, references, yeah, yeah. and uh, I've also got pictures and uh, from from NASA and elsewhere. Some I've got some amateur astronomer pictures of all one or two, I should say. And all the planets in the solar system have been changing mm. for the last thirty years. They've right. all been undergoing yeah. some type of change, mm -hmm. akin to a sort of global warming mm -hmm. effect. It's certainly being observed on Mars, uh, arguably on Pluto, definitely in uh, Uranus and Neptune. All the atmospheres have been changing, and Jupiter. That's had substantial changes in the atmosphere in this thirty-year period. So um, we can't be blamed for that, surely. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So this shows you, that's just one example, and there are several others, that these changes cannot be attributed to carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. not, not with certainty anyway, mm -hmm. you know, however way you look at it. Uh, and you do get a few people who will bring up the changes in the solar system or on one or two of the planets mm -hmm. into the argument, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've done here. And you know, people go and check all those references and find the global warming on Pluto. They can learn a little bit about the local interstellar medium which oh, yeah, is yeah, this yeah. Um, essentially uh, you know we ha we have a solar system that we uh, move around in and in between the planets uh, there is a little bit of a little bit of dust mm -hmm. but also in the um, in the sort of local region you can have dust coming in from supernovae explosions mm -hmm. and that sort of thing mm -hmm. which may may come in over hundreds or thousands of years and that's called the local interstellar medium so mm -hmm. you imagine when you're driving down the motorway and you go into a patch of fog that's like a local patch of fog yeah, if you come out the other yeah. side. It's a bit like that fog obviously comes in from somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not be able to see it. It's the same, essentially, in our solar system, that you can get this so these part of clouds of particles coming in from interstellar space over periods of time. And <clears throat> some people have tried to study that, and there's mm -hmm. been a little bit of study. But it's not that much studied. And NASA actually have tried to attack studies of the local interstellar medium. They've tried to suppress them because for, for whatever reason. And they'll give you an example of that in the book as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other area of looking at how the climate could be changing mm -hmm. and how average temperatures could be going up and down. It's nothing to do with CO2. Mm -hmm. The other big one is the activity of the sun. And, of course, Piers Corbin, oh, yeah. Jeremy yeah. Corbyn's brother, he talks about that a lot, okay. where you get these coronal mass ejections yeah. every so often where a, a stream of charged particles, mm -hmm. in sun, essentially the sun you know, burps, Mm. Every so often you get this cloud of gas mm -hmm. coming out, I think, I don't know, what is it, it's about, I forget the exact speed, it's quite fast, it's not the speed of light, but I think it takes two or three days to get here, so it won't be that fast, mm. a few hundred thousand miles an hour. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and these mm. particles then impinge on the Earth's atmosphere mm. and they create the aurora borealis, as one example. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you can see the aurora borealis yeah. in mm. there, well, what effect... <laughs> on the weather are these particles having yeah. and that's not re never really spoken about that much okay yeah. the only way it's spoken about is in terms of the cosmic ray radiation level because what they discovered and this was talked about a few years ago um and i've got a reference in the book here when the sun has a lot of sunspots mm. Um, that means that the magnetic field of the, th the sun is, I think, stronger 
mm. I think. I might have this the wrong way around because I'm not a sort of physics specialist. But basically, if you've got a lot of sunspots on the, spots from the sun, it means the magnetic field is stronger. And if the sun's mm. magnetic field is stronger, the resulting effect of that is that you get less cosmic ray radiation oh, yeah. coming through the atmosphere of the Earth. Right. All right. And what does that mean? Well, if you've got less cosmic ray radiation coming through, it changes the amount of cloud cover as mm. an average in the atmosphere of the Earth. So what they found was um, that when you've got periods of um, low sunspot activity, mm. I think this results in a cooling of the Earth. And that was established oh, okay. with a more minimum. And that, yeah, that study yeah. was done about 20, 30 years ago. And I've got mm. a reference to that in the book. So there's all that. Uh, mm. So you can clearly see that the sun <laughs> affects the Earth's weather. Yeah. And it, that affects it, I think, you know, almost m more than anything else. It affects it more I mean, than we do. obvious, don't mm -hmm. it? I mean, the yeah. sun yeah. Yeah. Warm, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But people yeah. don't make that link. They don't make that connection so because they're not, not as aware of things mm -hmm. like solar flares. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you have sunspots, which mm -hmm. are the dark regions. You also have something called faculi, mm -hmm. which, you know, is uh, most people never heard of that. Faculi, as you can see those... If you um, put a telescope on the sun, project the image onto a piece of paper, and you can see these slightly brighter areas of the sun, these little sort of bright regions, they're only a little mm. bit brighter, so you've got to look at this mm. image for a while before you can see them. Those are called faculi. I'd never heard of those mm. until um, I started studying astronomy a bit more in the 1980s. Mm. You know? well, yeah. okay. um, so there's all kinds of things mm. like that. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I lay some of that. I don't, I don't think I mentioned faculi in the book, but you can, anyone that's interested can look that up. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, the solar system stuff, that's, that's the first half really, uh, and the, 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 the sort of looking at both sides of the climate change, natural man-made argument, yeah. the, oh, yeah. that becomes a Hegelian dialectic. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are caught, yes, it is that, no, it isn't that, yes, it is that, no, it isn't that. Yeah. And they're not looking... Mm. up in the sky mm -mm. <laughs> as much <laughs> right. you know and what do we see when we look in the sky quite often you know and it should be a nice clear blue sky yeah, yeah. you know nice sunny day and what uh -huh. do we see we see those flipping trails don't we